Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach. I am a veteran family systems therapist and I have been obsessively studying human behavior for well over five decades as an adult. Um, this is one of a series of brief videos to pass on to you what I have learned across my 74 total years uh, and my study of human beings as a therapist. I want to focus in this video briefly on a problem for some people, perhaps for you, perhaps for someone you know. Um, do you know anybody who, in your judgment, acts impulsively despite uh, negative results? They, at times, say things or do things that are hurtful or regretful, and later they say, why did I do that? They can be said, such people can be said, to lack impulse control. Uh, an impulse is, as you know, some surge of emotions, thoughts, and physical actions that cause some kind of response in the environment, especially if people are around. Have you experienced emotional impulsive outbursts at times where you've acted in a way that later you regretted? Have you done that? Why can some people Imagine, see how you answer this question. Why can some people not act impulsively, especially in stressful situations, or when they're exceptionally frustrated or hurt or angry or scared? How is it that some people can maintain steady control of their thoughts, mouths, and bodies? How can some people do that? There is an answer which I want to offer you here. This is my opinion. Um, in order to understand the answer, you need to understand or try out the idea that normal people, like you and me, we have personalities, and our personalities are controlled by subselves. This is similar to saying an orchestra, the behavior of an orchestra, depends on the behavior of individual musicians. Same thing with the sports team. It's successful or not, it's sluggish or not, it's aggressive or not, uh, it's inspired or creative or not, depending on the action of several or many of the players that make up a sports team or an orchestra. So I'm suggesting that your personality is made up of parts or subcells. Each part has a special function. There are three types of subcells. One group, one type, is inner children. They're very reactive. Their special talent is to bring you emotions, which are certainly helpful at times, not always. The second group are guardians. The third group of subcells can be called managers. I describe this in more detail in other videos, so I'm not going to repeat myself here. The point is, if you are interested in trying to improve your impulse control, get to know your subselves. Um, it's interesting to know that logic in trying to meet and control your subselves often will not work. By the way, let me give you um, a, a, some sample subselves. These are common. Everybody's got a unique group of subcells, just like fingerprints and snowflakes. We each have a unique group of subcells. That's why each person has a unique personality. Here are some real common ones that can cause problems with impulse control. <clears throat> some people have an inner child who, whose characteristic is impatience. I want what I want right now. Some people have an inner child who is frustrated when she or he cannot get what she or he wants right now. That frustration can take over and cause people to think, speak, and act in an impulsive way. Similarly, common other subselves can be a hurt inner child. Another one is an angry or an enraged inner child who can scream and yell and say certain foul things and throw things 
and hit or punch or scratch impulsively. How about uh, part of your personality or someone's personality that be, can be called the people pleaser? What that part does somewhat impulsively is to smooth over things where you get hurt or attacked or blamed or frustrated uh, in some way and the people pleasers, no, 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 just say it's okay, oh, it's okay, no, everything's fine, I'm all right, I'm not mad, no, no, no. Uh, that's a kind of impulse that is not really honest. Um, there, are <clears throat> there are many other sub-selves. If in a moment I'll show you a place to find out in case you don't know who your sub-selves are, especially the ones who overcome in you and cause you to act in an impulsive way. Um, you cannot, in my experience, people who lack um, impulse control, uh, who act suddenly and impulsively, verbally, non-verbally, you can't reason with them. You can't say, oh, grow up. Get a hold of yourself. Get a grip. That doesn't work. Because the subcells that cause the, um, the impulses do not listen to logic. They're driven by emotions and needs. And they don't care about your logic. They want what they want when they want it. Um, so don't try and reason with yourself or other people. In a similar way, you may know somebody who has a problem with anger, one class of common impulse problems, impulse control problems, is people who fly off the handle, so to speak. People who make or say or do angry things and offend those around them or abuse them or hurt them. And sometimes if that reaches the courts, uh, judges will say in their attempt to try and help the situation, all right, I sentence you to go for eight weeks to an anger management class. I think this is well-intentioned and totally foolish. My opinion as an experienced therapist with people who have anger problems or similar types of impulse difficulties, a class on raising your awareness on how to not be so angry and how to... Um, curb or control angry impulses may work for a while, but it will not change your subcells from being who they are. <clears throat> that raises the question, can you change the subcells that take you over and cause impulsive behaviors and actions? My opinion, after 22 years of study and clinical practice, is Yes, you can change and improve uh, impulsive behavior. You can reduce it. You really can. Here are three particular ways to do that. The first step is to study lesson one in my nonprofit self improvement website. I'm not selling anything, there are no ads in this website at all. None. Study lesson one in which you will find a way to learn more about personality subcells and identify specifically your own subcells. That's step one. Step two is to patiently learn how to interact with and negotiate with individual subcells like an angry child, a frustrated child, a selfish child an ashamed child and their guardian subcells. <clears throat> Learn how to negotiate with your subcells. Bring them into the present time because often, many times, they're living in the past. I won't go into more detail, but I do in other videos on this subject. Bring them into the present. Connect them with another very powerful part of your personality who's called the nurturer. The nurturer knows how to soothe your inner kids, help them fill their current needs, and help prevent them from taking you, your personality over and causing you to do impulsive, regrettable behavior. So 
learn how to negotiate with your impulsive, um, spirited, helpful, normal inner kids and their guardians. The third uh, thing you can do out of three is become aware of identifying what you need. Many people think they know what they need, but in my experience as a clinician, they often don't understand that they have a surface need, but they don't know underneath what the real need is. <clears throat> I have other videos that go into more detail, so again, I'm not going to repeat that here. But the third thing you can do to reduce impulsivity is to become aware and make it a habit of saying, what do I need right now? Uh, dig down below that to say, what do I really need? Once you identify your need, work with your subselves to find acceptable ways, both in private and in public, to fill your needs so you don't have to have impulsive behavior. There's a lot more to this subject than I've been able to present. Um, so one way that you can find out more about this, meaning more about increasing your self-control without giving up your integrity and without turning into an entirely different person. To find out more about that, here is a link to an article in my website. It's free. Again, there are no ads at all. I am simply selling awareness and education. So, uh, reflect for a minute. Why did you watch this video? What did you hope to get? Here we are at the end of the video. Did you get at least some part of what you hoped to get? I hope so. In any event, I welcome you to study all of my videos. There are over 170 of them about a lot of different self-improvement topics in seven different groups. They correspond to seven self-improvement lessons on my website, sfhelp, H-E-L-P, dot org. I appreciate your watching here. I hope you found this useful. I'm open to any kind of comments or suggestions, praise or criticism, constructive criticism, please. Um, here's the link to this article. Thanks for watching.